Hey viewers, uh, we've got another teardown to do today. Uh, we've uh, just picked up this behemoth of a unit. Um, everything I pick up seems to be uh, enormously heavy, annoyingly. So this is an IBM 3174-61R. It's called an establishment controller. And what it basically does, it's a sort of configurable and programmable communication gateway between um, networks and sort of wide area networks and um, LANs and old style text terminals. Specifically the IBM 3270 uh, terminals which use a coax um, connection uh, rather than RS-232. Um, so yeah it's a bit of an old bit of old tech. Um, these I think these sort of came out in about the mid 1980s um, obviously we've got five and a quarter inch floppy disks there so that's definitely a 1980s territory um, possibly you'd think it was a bit earlier than that to be honest using five and a quarters but uh, no I believe these came out in 1986 uh, and I've seen marketing materials for them um, up until in 1996 so they they were obviously making these uh, for a good decade. So uh, let's just take a look around this. Obviously we've got some uh, very, very typical IBM styling. Um, we've got a big clunking on off switch that IBM always seem to uh, like to use. Wants to break your finger as you flick it up and down. Um, we've got uh, two five and a quarter inch floppy drives. I believe that um, this was fairly configurable. You could actually have an option. So I think they, when they were originally supplied, they come with one disc drive and you can optionally put in a second disk drive or have a hard disk in place of uh, the second disk drive. Uh, so we've got a numeric keypad here, um, some seven segment displays just in there, uh, most likely for sort of status uh, indication and a few other knobs and buttons. I'm not gonna go through about how this actually works because I really don't know and I can't be asked to find out. So we've got two five and a quarter inch floppy drives. Interestingly, these are 2.4 megabytes. I wasn't aware that these existed until I saw this unit. I thought that was a, a bit unusual. So obviously the uh, the typical maximum size for the um, five and a quarter inch floppy drive was uh, the 1.2 meg, but uh, these have obviously been doubled to 2.4. And round on the back, we've got uh, the fan outlet mains input, some various connections along here. We have um, eight uh, BNC terminals. Um, these will be for the coax connections out to the, the remote terminals more BNC's there, we've got what looks like a, an AUI port and an RJ45 style connector so that's possibly twisted pair ethernet as well so and we've got a, a monitor symbol here but there's no socket in it so that's just empty. So in terms of construction um, everything seems to be metal the uh, top lid is uh, pressed steel and it looks like we've got aluminium end panels Right, let's whip the top off this and see what we've got on the inside. Um, this um, metal cover is attached by two um, clips just in here, which is pull up one round the other side, and then right. So pretty neat uh, layout inside. Uh, we've got the two floppy drives just there in uh, what appears to be plastic cages. Got a cooling fan, a um, load of wires running over here with uh, large ferrite filters on. Uh, we've got some plug-in modules just down there. Um, this looks like it's uh, expansion cards, looks like there's one in there. Uh, power supply, cooling fan and it looks like there's a mains filter just underneath it. Now from the limited reading I've done of the user guide uh, from this, there is a uh, a bootable operating system which sits on the uh, floppy disks. Um, what CPU or de any details like that about this system, I have no idea. I don't even know what the operating system is. Um, probably some proprietary IBM thing. Um, unfortunately, there was no floppy disk supplied with this, so there's probably a basic BIOS system in buried away on the board somewhere, and that. Uh, bootstraps uh, the operating system off the floppy disk so without that uh, we have no idea what it actually uh, used so uh, right, looking at these uh, floppy disks uh, the top one which is the one that's sort of user replaceable you know you, uh, the user could upgrade it have the floppy disk or a hard disk in here and there's these uh, quick release tabs so 
so the floppy disk drive can be taken out. That looks like a completely standard five and a quarter inch drive. The Shugar interface um, that's just been mounted inside this uh, this plastic chassis. The disk drive below um, is actually mounted in sort of semi permanently with uh, screws, so I'll have to use a screwdriver to get that bit out. So as I mentioned before, this is uh, configurable, so there'll be um, different types of um, incoming network adapters um, that you'd be able to attach into this to then uh, convert that out to the the eight way. Um, outputs to the uh, serial terminals. By the looks of it, this is where those expansion cards go. There's a card in here already. We've got a BNC with uh, with coax. Um, we've got the other end of that AUI cable, and we've got um, the other end of the RJ45, which is up there. So this is quite clearly a, a network adapter. We've got um, thin net, uh, which is the coax um, Ethernet, and we've got um, the AUI port for any other types of uh, physical network and we have and we have a twisted pair nicely packaged interface card there we will open that up later well the power supply here looks like it's uh, removable by these screws here and it looks like it slides slides out to make it easily removable. There is the power supply. Notice everything does have these void if removed stickers on. All individually numbered. So that's 0277. The fan's got 0278. These two modules down in here have 0283 and 0282. So yeah, it looks like it's probably original. It looks like there's a one of the screws holding this metal cover on down here has 0280, so Looks like this has possibly not been opened since it was manufactured. I'm not quite sure what date it was manufactured yet. Okay, looks like this card frame is just bolted to the this metal cover. I'm starting to see a little bit more detail in this now. Um, the motherboard is uh, seems to be that size. The base looks like it's uh, just a big chunk of cast aluminium. Uh, the board is then sandwiched between that and this um, very substantial metal plate. Uh, now I was, when I was reading the specifications on this I was just trying to get an idea of what CPU it might have used. It uh, detailed it having two megabytes of onboard memory and it's expandable to six so I would imagine there's going to be two meg on the actual motherboard and then these are possibly the memory expansions. Yeah, uh, yeah they look like bank of uh, memory in there. Uh, but yeah, I think I think the bearings might have gone. <laughs> Other floppy drive. Nice little tray there to uh, presumably to store your spare discs in. That's the front control panel with a little sort of flat flex type cable.
Okay, we might be there. Right, on first glance, uh, it doesn't look anything particularly interesting. <laughs> All the chips on here seem to be dated 1989. I found that missing connector that was on at the back there. It's obviously been ripped off somehow. Anything on the base? Nope. Right, I can't seem to find anything um, at all on most of the devices in here. They're probably custom parts. Uh, these are either Toshiba or IBM branded. Um, they all have a similar numbering system. So we've got two numbers, a letter, and then four numbers. So uh, let's start down here. So we've got uh, 96X4749. We've got 61F0240. 73 x7318 25f8945 73x4130 so obviously some custom stuff um, Toshiba it might be a, a sort of microcomputer microcontroller kind of stuff the one thing I did recognize that we've got an, uh, an Intel 8051 microcontroller up in the top corner there it's under IBM 98 um, 6127893 and then some more numbers yeah nothing particularly decipherable on that um, another one there 66x2711 looks like we've got a programmable device there uh, with 1988 date code a couple of devices there I'm not sure what they are um, got uh, a soldered in EEPROM uh, dated 1988 some buffer logic stuff, 74 series, 74 LS244, 245, similar stuff that's in that Quantel actually. Looks like we got some Fujitsu RAM just there, uh, a couple of oscillators, three, four, five oscillators. And uh, these look like the output ports that go to the, the serial terminals. So not really a huge amount in there. And last thing to come out is this, uh, what I think is a mains filter. Okay, here we've got the um, control panel. Uh, so this is just a plastic box. It looks like it's been heat staked together. All these, uh, these bits are holding them back down. It looks like they've been melted over. They're not going to come apart very easily. Unless people... Probably not much in there anyway. Yeah, just a pretty basic PCB with uh, a uh, what looks like a Toshiba part. Yeah, don't get anything coming back for that IC either, so another custom or rebadged job. Let's have a look inside one of these memory modules. Got some thermal foam stuff. And those are eighty three X four one. Seven um, branded IBM, so yeah, obviously rebadged. And last but not least is the uh, network interface card. Not expect to see too much in here. Yeah, not a huge amount on here either. We've got a couple of Xilinx um, XC4310 FPGAs. Um, don't know what that is. Uh, a couple of EPROMs there. The IBM on version one, uh, dated 1993, and that there is an Intel 80186. And spotted for the win, LM555CN, classic. Okay, let's take a quick look at uh, one of these floppy disks. So we've just got a plastic, plastic chassis thing. Well, there's a um, YE data um, 802. 
So yeah, that look, just looks like a, um, a bog standard five and a quarter inch floppy drive with a standard shoe guard interface. So I guess I should be able to plug that into my PC. Um, obviously, I won't be able to read 2.4 megabyte disks because um, I would imagine the BIOS doesn't support it. But uh, I believe these drives can also read and write uh, the standard 1.2 megabytes. So might be handy to have. Okay, that's the end of that. Uh, nothing more to say. Sorry it wasn't a particularly interesting one, but uh, you can't win them all, can you? Uh, so that was the insides of an IBM 3174. Right, thanks for watching everybody. I'll see you on the next one.